Well, yesterday the Senate passed a foreign aid bill that includes a provision to ban TikTok from U.S. app stores if the company refuses to cut ties with its Chinese owner within a year. President Biden says he'll sign the bill into law at some point today. And I have the chance to speak with Adam Kovakovich, founder and CEO of Chamber of Progress, about what it means for users. It's a big, complicated bill, it includes aid for Israel and Ukraine, but it also includes this requirement that unless ByteDance sells TikTok to a U.S. owner within the next year, that they have, they have a year to do this, then the app stores, Apple's App Store and Google Play, uh, are no longer allowed to carry TikTok in the app stores. And so um, that that was actually lengthened from six months to a year um, at the request of several senators. Um, and then if this bill passes, which is this, which it is expected to pass, then it will go on to President Biden where it's expected to be signed. Now, there will be legal challenges, and we can talk about that, um, but that was the, probably the likely next step that this goes to the courts. How likely is it that we could see a TikTok ban in the U.S.? To be perfectly honest, I think there's good, the, the two big decision points are one, what happens to this in the courts? Um, and does a court allow this law to proceed? Now, there are some who will argue, and certainly I think TikTok will argue that this is a restraint on TikTok's corporate speech. And now the fact is the bill was, was narrowly tailored, in my, in my view, to focus on just the ownership um, of the law. This was actually very similar to what was done during the Trump administration for the app Grinder, the gay dating app Grinder. Um, the Trump administration actually demanded that it be sold from a Chinese owner to a U.S. owner, and it was, and it was relatively uncontroversial. There was a concern about what um, the Chinese might do having access to Grinder user data, and I think this, there's a similar concern here. But really, the second question is, assuming the law is actually upheld in court, what does the Chinese government do? because I think they're, they're gonna face really a decision about whether they want TikTok to continue to succeed in the United States, in which case the only path is really to sell it, or whether they'd actually rather just sort of, a, you know, take a propaganda point here and sort of say, look, you know, this, this terrible Americans, they banned our app and, and use it for domestic propaganda purposes, which is very possible as well. So I think at that point, it's gonna mm -hmm. be in the really the hands of the Chinese government, what they decide to do. What is the real crux of the data concerns here when it comes to TikTok for U.S. lawmakers? Well, I think what we've seen from Congress is there's really two sets of concerns. There's one set of concerns that's really about um, the requirements of, uh, essentially there's a Chinese law that was passed several years ago that says if you're a company that is based in China, you essentially have to operate and turn over data in concert with the Chinese government. And unlike the American government, which has, you know, subpoenas and warrants and a law enforcement process that's really based on due process, there is none of that due process in China. And so a Chinese company has to turn over data on its users. And there are you know, many people who believe that essentially the Chinese government has today access uh, to clear access to really everything that any you know, American TikTok user really does on the app. But there's a second set of concerns, which is really about propaganda and about the fact that it's Chinese owned um, is a makes it an information weapon, right? And so, for example, if you're looking for information about Tiananmen Square protests many years ago, if you're looking for information about the Uyghurs, then it's very hard to find that. There have been studies that document there's much less of that content on TikTok than there is on, say, Instagram. And that's a big set of concern. I, I think, for example, like we would have never let the Soviet Union own a TV station in the midst of a Cold War. And I think that's the concern that, that many policymakers have about TikTok today. Interesting. Uh, so I know TikTok CEO claims that the app is run independently of its Chinese owners, but several whistleblowers at the company have said otherwise to the point uh, that you were just covering. What details do they claim were shared? Well, exactly right. We've seen a reporting over the last week um, based on whistleblowers, and these are American employees of the company who say that they were essentially pressured to disguise the app's connections to ByteDance, a Chinese parent company. So, for example, there was one former employee who said that, you know, on paper, uh, he was supposedly, you know, reporting to an American manager, but in reality, he was reporting to a Chinese ByteDance executive and was asked by that executive to send spreadsheets full of U.S. user data to, uh, to Chinese executive, China-based executives. And so 
I think this idea, I, TikTok, TikTok for years has tried to persuade policymakers that they're not under China's thumb, that they're independently run. But when you see these details come out from former employees, I think that it erases any idea that there's any separation between um, the Chinese parent company, ByteDance, and, and TikTok operations. It, they're one and the same. There's a law that was passed several years ago that claims that, a Chinese law, that claims that things like TikTok's algorithm are a Chinese, um, you know, essentially national security asset. But the more the Chinese government resists the sale, I think the more it sort of deepens the reason for this concern, right? Because look, let's face it, if TikTok was just some harmless video app, then the Chinese government would probably say, yeah, we don't care that much about it, go ahead and sell it. But if they resist the sale, then I think it sort of backs up the concern that a lot of you know, American policymakers have that the Chinese government sees this as a national security asset on the world stage. And We've seen, obviously, uh, several bigwigs say that they would be interested potentially in TikTok ownership. Uh, is there a potential front runner if a deal does go through and TikTok is purchased by a U.S. owner? Well, I think there's probably, candidly, only so many um, large companies that could uh, could acquire the comp could acquire TikTok with absent any kind of antitrust concerns. I also think that you know it's it's going to be an expensive uh, asset, and so the most likely scenario, in my view, is that there's some kind of investor group, perhaps even made up of some of the you know U.S. firms that are already investors in TikTok. And so, um, you know, I, from TikTok's perspective, I think the best thing, the best scenario they could have going is several prospective bidders and to have essentially a bidding war. But again, it really all depends on whether the Chinese government allows that to happen. And, and I think that's an open question.